Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Steven and welcome back to another Android tutorial. Now today I want to show you how to root the most Android phones in just a couple of minutes. This works on the most phones and on all Android versions, including KitKat. But just be aware guys, this doesn't work on phones with a locked bootloader like Samsung or Huawei phones. So they have mostly locked bootloader and in order to root them you have to unlock the bootloader first. So check if your bootloader is locked by just googling it. But all Qualcomm based phones usually have a locked bootloader. Now for 99% of the China phones which have a MediaTek chipset, they don't come with a locked bootloader and they can be routed easily with this tool I'm going to show you. Now as always I'm not responsible for any damage on your device and please try to follow the tutorial exactly. Also you can find a written tutorial on chinadevices.com. Okay guys, then I would say let's get started. Alright guys, now before you can start you have to enable USB debugging mode on the smartphone. This is really important because without Android debugging also called USB debugging, the phone is not properly recognized by the computer. So make sure you access the developer options. If you cannot see the developer options, go here to about the phone and tap exactly 7 times at build number, then you will see you are now a developer. So now you can go back to the settings and you will now see the developer options. So just enter the developer options and make sure that USB debugging is ticked. So the box has to be ticked, sometimes it's called Android debugging, but this is the same like USB debugging. So just make sure that you tick the box here and allow USB debugging. Okay, so basically that's it. And now we can go to the computer and download all the necessary software and then connect the smartphone to the computer. So let's go. So we're now here on the computer and first of all let me show you what you have to download. So today we're going to use iRoot. iRoot is a routing tool and it's very easy to use and works for a lot of China phones and also other Android phones. Then you will need the ADB drivers. I'm using the PDANet driver package because it works with all MTK based smartphones and also with some other smartphones. So make sure you install the PDANet driver package and if you have a different phone just download the drivers from the website of your manufacturer. And also if you have an MTK phone be sure to download the MTK Droid Tools tool because um, first of all we're going to check if we can root the phone temporary with MTK Droid tools. So I have now connected my smartphone to the computer. As you can see PDANet will say device attached and it should be properly detected in the device manager as Android debugging. Now the next step is just for users with an MTK based China phone. So make sure you download and run MTK Droid tools. Maybe you have to reconnect the smartphone if it's not detected. But just wait a couple of seconds until the tool detects your smartphone. What you can check here is if you have root access or not. Now you will see here a blue box means no root access. Then a yellow box means you get root access maybe if you press the root button here. And a green box means you have root access. So you can try to press the root button and this will give you temporary root. But as you can see right now it doesn't work on the smartphone. So it's a very tough phone and today we're going to try if we can root it with iRoot. Okay, so if you can't get root access here in MTK Droid Tools, we're going to use iRoot. Now make sure you run the tool as administrator and also connect the smartphone to the computer so make sure it's connected and USB debugging is enabled. Now if the drivers are correctly installed, it will now search for the smartphone and also find it. Now the next thing what it does is install a Chinese application here on your smartphone and this just makes sure that you can connect here to the routing tool. So just make sure you don't touch a device, just leave it alone. Just if you can see a message appearing on the screen which says something like grant access, then be sure to grant access. Otherwise you don't give enough permissions to the routing tool and the root method will fail. But now just wait a couple of seconds, it should now find your smartphone so it's still in connecting mode. And after this you can press the root button in order to root it. And this process can really take up to 5 minutes, so just be patient, it now tries to get a stable connection, so you see the app just goes on and off. And yeah, patience is really important, so don't panic, just grab a coffee, sit down, and wait until the tool tells you something. Okay, so now you can see Qbot S168 is connected. So this is the phone we are going to root. And now if you really want to root, make sure you tick the user agreement, also read it and then press the root button in order to root the smartphone. So this is what I will do right now. Now after you press the root button, the tool will try several root exploits on the smartphone. So the phone will reboot, the phone will probably go on and off and just be patient again, don't disconnect it, don't shut down the PC, 
you will get a message here on the screen of the tool which tells you if the route was successful or not. So maybe this tool can't root your smartphone, then you should do a read back with SP Flash tools if you have a MediaTek based chipset, or just check out xdadevelopers.com for your specific smartphone on how to root it. But on MediaTek phones, um, it works for sure. So here you can see the smartphone reboots now, you can see probably the boot logo here, and yeah, just don't disconnect it, and after this rebooted you will maybe get um, some permissions you have to grant, and after this you should get a message on the screen if the root method was successful or not. Okay, so I will just do a cut right now, because this can take up to 5 minutes. Alright guys, after the last reboot you should be back in Android, and you should see waiting for the device on the screen. Now you have to unlock the screen, otherwise you will see waiting for the device for a very long time. Also you will get a message here granting um, root shell access for the ADB shell. Be sure to grant root shell access because otherwise you maybe will get failed. And here you can see now S168 has root permissions, so the root was successful. And I would say now let's go to the device and let's see if the root was really successful. Now the only bad thing about this iRoot tool is that it also installs some Chinese applications and some bullshit super user king user application on your smartphone. If the root was successful you should find here a super user application. But yeah this is not the normal super user so this is king user and I would definitely recommend to get rid of this. Also of this Chinese application which you can find in the menu. So just go here to uninstall and uninstall this Chinese application. Okay, now we did get rid of the Chinese application, but we still have to replace King user with the real super user. So what we're going to do right now is we'll go to the Google Play Store, so make sure you have internet access, and then you just search here for Super SU. So this is the one and only app made by Chainfire, and be sure to install this application. Okay, now you have two Super SU apps on your smartphone. So first of all, you should now run Super SU and make sure it has proper root shell access to update the binaries. So this is what we're doing right now. Just make sure you run Super SU, the one you have downloaded. And now you will get the Super user binary needs to be updated. And now don't press continue, just go back to the other Super SU application and just check if Super SU is blocked or something. But if you cannot see here blocked, then just go back to the Super SU application and choose the normal way. Because you don't have a custom recovery right now, you choose the normal way to update the binaries. Then you will get this permission request. Be sure to grant access. And here, maybe once again, or maybe a third time, always be sure to grant root shell access. Because otherwise, you cannot update the binaries. Okay, so once again. Damn, this is annoying. But yeah, it's now installing the binaries and this can take up to one or two minutes. And if you can see the screen for more than five minutes, you'll probably get, um, cannot install the binaries, please reboot the system. But usually you just have to wait here one minute and then you will get installation success if SuperSU really has root shell access. So you just have to wait a bit and okay, installation failed. And if you get installation failed, you have to do the same thing which I've shown you before. So go back to the other super user application and be sure to choose here grant root shell access to super SU. Because if it doesn't have root shell access, you cannot install or update the binaries. So now once again, press continue and choose the normal way. And now the installation should succeed. But yeah, just be patient once again. And this can take up to a couple of minutes. And yeah, it's now installing this shit. And after about 2 or 3 minutes, I got installation success. And now you should reboot your system. And after this, you will have root shell access. So now let me quickly reboot the system. And then I will show you how to get rid of the other Super SU application. So the reboot can take some time, so let's just wait. And after you're back in Android, you should disable the King user or Chinese Super user. So what you just have to do is just tap at it hold it and drag it into app info. If this is not working on a device, you can go to settings, apps and click here on super use and force stop it and then disable it. So it's a built in application, so you can disable it this way. If it doesn't work, you can use titanium, you can use, um, for instance, the terminal emulator and delete it or just use my tool, which you can find down below in the description to remove it. Now you can run SuperSU and as you can see, you should now have root access. And also no Chinese applications anymore from iRoot. Okay guys, so basically that was my tutorial. 
I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, just feel free to ask. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you again in my next videos. Have a nice day and bye bye.